Hello, I'm Sonakshi Kundra, a SaaS woman of Amritsar, and I welcome you to our session of book reading for kids by Muskan, an initiative by Prabha Khetan Foundation in association with Red Panda. Prabha Khetan Foundation is a base in Calcutta, founded by late Dr. Prabha Khetan. The foundation is dedicated to promoting performing arts, culture, education, literature, gender equality, and women's empowerment. It collaborates with caregivers, committed individuals, like-minded institutions to implement culture, education, and social welfare projects in India. Similarly, Muskan aims to popularize heritage literature, culture among young children, national-wide by weaving it into formal and informal education through student interactivity. Some of the ways devised to do this are culture programs like storytelling, theater dance, music and arts, which are organized by a collaboration with our na national and international association and institutions in a pan-India and overseas network of schools, education and art institutions. The guest for today's session is Ms. Shobha Tharoor Srinivasanji. Ms. Shobha Tharoor is a California-based children author and a professional voice over talent, poet, and a translator who came to this second career from nonprofit, where she spent two decades using her words to bring funds to disability initiative. Her voice has been used in documentaries, educational and journalistic initiative, and audiobooks, both in India and also in the United States. And her essays and stories have appeared in publications including India Currents, Scroll.in, and Skipping Stone. Her poetry reader published Clear Fork Publishing, How Many Lines in a Limbra. So it introduces readers to poetic forms like sonnets, nonets, limbrics, poetry stanzas of various length that demonstrates the beats and the rhythm of rhythmic and unrhythmic poetry. The illustrated poetry book and the wordplay draws kids of all age to the vast variety of poetry and invites children to use their inventive artistry to write as well. She has presented the difficult subject of poetry form in such a simple possible way so that it makes learning such more easier and fun. Moreover, her picture book, In the Alphabet, published by Mango and Marigold Press, takes reader around India and provides geography, geography in its maps, history in the fun facts on each page, and poetry in the description of places in a subcontinent. In addition to this, today we'll be discussing about Prince with a Paintbrush, the story of Raja Ravi Varma. It's an illustrated biography that brings alive the life and times of celebrated Indian artist. It was published by Red Panda, an imprint of Westland Books in April 2021. She is also the published author of five other children's books in India with Mango, DC Books, and Tulika. Let's begin the session. If there's any question, and you can see the chat box below, you can type and let's make it interesting and fun. I would request all of you to sit back, relax, and enjoy this amazing session. Over to Ms. Shobaji now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sanakshi. And I thoroughly enjoyed that rousing anthem from Prabha Khaitan Foundation. Uh, kids, how, how many of you have read uh, Prince with a Paintbrush? Have you seen the book? Do you know what the book looks like? I guess I can't hear everybody because you're muted. But uh, if you have a thumbs up to tell me you've read the book, that would be terrific. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. What I'm going to do is read from the book for you, and I'm going to read it in a linear way. I'm going to start with the first page and move on, and we'll see. If I find you're engaged, we'll read all the way till the end. Uh, otherwise, we can stop in between, have you ask me some questions, and then I can continue to read some more. There, uh, there may be some questions that come to your mind from the fun fact page. A lot of cool facts there. So I'm hoping we get to that and we have a chance to chat about the book as well. So, okay, this is called Prince with a Paintbrush and it is the story of Raja Ravi Varma. 
And we're going to find out why he was called a Raja, whether he was royalty or not. And you know, this person was born almost 200 years ago. So isn't that exciting? We're going to read about someone who still affects our interest in art, our, our, um, you know, our draping of saris. Uh, we see his paintings everywhere. Recently, uh, a, fun, a fundraising initiative included a lot of Bollywood actresses dressed up as Raja Ravi Varma paintings. And though the cal it was for a calendar that sold and made lots of money for, uh, for a nonprofit. So obviously Raja Ravi Varma has captured a lot of people's attention. And I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about him. I'm going to read from the book. So it's going to be hard. Usually when I read in a live audience, I'm able to turn and show you the page. But I'm going to be reading it a little straight, I'm afraid. I, if some of you have the book with you, please follow along. Prince with a Paintbrush. In school today, Mrs. Mitra asked the class if anybody could name a famous artist. I was excited. I raised my hand and said, Vincent van Gogh. I remembered that beautiful framed painting in Appa's office, The Starry Night with its inky blue and black swirls. Mrs. Mithra smiled at me. Then she asked if anyone had heard of a famous Indian artist. Aarti raised her hand and said, I know, Raja Ravi Varma. Mrs. Mithra looked very pleased. I hadn't heard of this artist before. He was a Raja? <gasps> That's unusual. Raja means king. Was he royalty? So interesting. I couldn't wait to get home and ask Amma to help me find some information about this artist. Amma was excited about the project as well. She remembered some prints of this artist's work in her Amma's house in Palakkad in Kerala. When she was young, she thought those posters, I mean, she thought those pictures were all movie posters. Later she learned that those colorful pictures were characters from mythological stories. They were all reprints of paintings by Ravi Varma. Amma and I sat down at our computer and decided to look up this painter on the internet. I learned that Ravi Varma was born in 1848 in the village of Kilimanur in Kerala. And you know, on this page, we have a little child who is sort of the narrator of the book, who's doing the research, just like all of you probably did at some point, to learn more about the artist. And she says, seriously, 1848? That was such a long time ago. He was born more than 115 years before my grandmother. Wow. When Ravi Varma was a child, he loved to draw. His parents often found him drawing and coloring on the walls. It was good that Ravi's poet mother, Umayamba Tamburati, and his Sanskrit scholar father, Neelakandan Bhattathiripad, were happy about their son's creativity on the walls of the house. Instead of being cross with their son, they encouraged him. We read that he drew animals and ordinary people like the household and kitchen staff and the gardeners. Ravi Varma was a lucky boy. His uncle, Raja Raja Varma, who was a painter, noticed his nephew's obvious talent for art. He showed Ravi how to draw figures on the ground using something called quicklime. Amma said, it's like the chalk I use for drawing on the floor with my friends. Later, his uncle prepared paints from leaves, flowers, tree bark and soil. Can you imagine that? So this is Years ago, when there was no oil paint, in fact, Raja Ravi Varma was one of the first painters in India to use oil paints. They used to make colored paint with leaves, flowers, tree bark and soil. What a fun way to make color. Ravi Varma's first set of oil paints were brought much later from the big city of Madras. Madras is what Chennai used to be called. He was both nervous and excited to use them. When Ravi was 14, his uncle Raja Raja Varma took him to the palace of the Maharaja of Travancore to observe and study under the palace painter Ramaswami Naidu. Ravi started with learning watercolor painting. Later, 
when the Maharaja hired the Danish-born British artist Theodor Jensen to paint his portrait, Ravi Varma was able to observe and study the craft of oil painting. Ravi Varma painted people just as he saw them. And you know what this technique was called? It was realism. So this technique was influenced by the techniques of European realism that he had learned from his teacher. This means that he painted people exactly like they looked without adding or highlighting anything. And then he says, see this painting of the lady in a white and gold sari was how women dressed in Kerala. So Ravi Varma may have painted the portrait using his mother or a grown-up friend as a model. He painted many paintings of Kerala women since he knew them the best. Ravi Varma was the most successful Indian painter to start using this realistic style of painting. He was also one of the first to use oil paints on canvas. The Indian artist before him painted in what was called the company style since many of them worked for patrons in the British East India Company or other foreign companies. This art style was a blend of Mughal and English styles in which the men and women on the canvas had a flat one-dimensional look. You know the difference between one-dimensional and three-dimensional, right? When Raja Ravi Varma painted, if you looked at his paintings, it almost felt like somebody could walk right out of that canvas. You would feel you wouldn't feel like the person could step you you wouldn't feel like the person could step right out of the portrait as in Ravi Varma's painting if you followed the company style. In this painting, Kerala Royal Lady, we can see the folds of the woman's sari and the thoughtful expression in her eyes. Influenced by the Italian Renaissance painters, Ravi Varma drew and painted the human body just like it was. He painted fabrics, textures and materials clearly with striking contrasts. Ammar, Amma said to me that Raja Ravi Varma's work, work marked a turning point in Indian art. We read that his work is a fusion of Indian aesthetics with techniques from the West. So he learned European realism from the West but he used Indian subjects in his paintings. And that's what Amma explained, that his paintings had a little bit of both of the Indian and the European art styles. His style was similar to the European painters, but the subjects of his paintings were the Indian people he knew. He painted the people in everyday clothes and jewelry, making his art different and special. In the olden days, people got married early. Guess how old Raja Ravi Varma was when he got married? You know how old he was? He was just 18 years old. Ravi Varma's parents married him off to Rani Bhagiradi Bai. And guess how old she was? A 12, she was a 12 year old princess and she was from the Maveli Kara royal house. And see, now look at our little narrator over there. She says, I'm so glad that times are different now. I don't want to be married off in four years or even in 10 years. 10 years, she'd be 18. And in four years, she'd be four, 12 years old because she's eight. So now we know how old she is. She's eight years old. Some of you may be eight years old, right? I think so. I can see. There's some faces that look quite young. Being married meant that Ravi Varma needed to be responsible Oh, is that how old you are? You're nine? Did you say nine? Okay. Yes. Being married meant that Ravi Varma needed to be responsible and have a full-time job. He decided that his job was to be a painter and he worked very hard. Using oil paints. Sorry, is something getting in the way of my, my picture here? Can you see me? Sorry. Uh, being married meant that Ravi Varma needed to be responsible and have a full-time job. He decided to be a painter and he worked very hard. Using oil paints, he learned to master his techniques on canvas. He began his career painting portraits of the important local people that he knew. Since his paintings were so amazing, he was soon hired 
to do royal to do oil paintings for the royal court of Travancore. And that was in Kerala. So that's where he was first hired. He was hired to paint probably the prince or the princesses or other royalty in the court. Amma said that Ravi Varma worked very hard and followed a strict daily routine. He would wake up at four o'clock every morning to say his prayers. Four o'clock. Do any of you wake up at four o'clock? Don't think so. At six o'clock, when the sun was just coming up, he'd start working on his art. He painted every day till five in the evening. Only then would he play with his children or be with his wife and friends. Amma believed that all the hard work led to Ravi Varma's success. I knew that Amma would say that. I bet he wouldn't have been so successful if he didn't have people cooking his meals for him and keeping his house clean. So he got a lot of help, didn't he, to do his painting. I'm sure he did. The painting Naya Lady Adorning Her Hair was awarded the first prize, which was the Governor's Gold Medal at the Madras Fine Art Society exhibition in 1873. It made Ravi Varma a very famous man. The painting was shown in Europe, where it received a certificate of merit at the international exhibition held in Vienna. It was a huge, big achievement since so many other painters took part and the competition was very tough. I'm sure you've all taken part in different competitions where there were so many different people participating. Oh, Sanika says that some days she wakes up at four o'clock. His paintings were also sent to the World's Columbian Exposition held in Chicago in 1893. He won three gold medals there. Do you know who else went to that big exposition in Chicago? Have you heard of Swami Vivekananda? He went to the World Conference of Religions there and gave his big famous speech. So there were a lot of people represented. Swami Vivekananda went on his own, but Raja Ravi Varma didn't get to go abroad. He's never been anywhere out of India, but his art got to travel, which is quite impressive. Soon travel became a regular activity for Ravi Varma. He traveled all over India and considered it a part of his cultural growth. The women he met during his travel became the subjects of his early paintings. I read that some of his paintings had multiple versions of the same women. Towards the end of the 1800s, Ravi Varma decided to change his focus and use real men and women as models for gods and goddesses in his art. Every image he painted continued to have a three-dimensional look and the gods and goddesses he painted looked like real people who lived in the real world. You know, for some of you, if you have paintings or if you have um, paintings of Ravi Varma in your home, or when I was growing up in my mother's puja room, we used to have a painting, uh, just a print, you know, like a photograph uh, behind a glass frame. And that was actually a Ravi Varma print of a goddess Saraswati painting. So he, a lot of people have had his paintings in their home without realizing that it was a Ravi Varma painting. This painting of, of Goddess Saraswati is so beautiful. It's a very different kind of look. Really looks like a woman dressed up and, and, and there, isn't it? And look at the bright colors that he used to paint Goddess Lakshmi. This face looks so real. I read that Ravi Varma often modeled Hindu goddesses on South Indian women whom he considered beautiful. This, I was thinking, this painting could be my mother all dressed up. We found four different versions of Goddess Lakshmi paintings when we looked online. If you look up online about Ravi Varma at some point, you'll see a lot of interesting paintings. Ravi Varma also painted male gods in a realistic style with bodies like that of real people. In this painting, Radha is meeting Lord Krishna for the first time. Adrija, you've seen these paintings on Google? That's wonderful. In this painting, Radha is meeting Lord Krishna for the first time. I told Amma that Ravi Varma's paintings reminded me of the pictures in Amar Chitra Katha. Did any of you read Amar Chitra Katha comics in which you saw paintings that looked a little bit like what you saw in this book? We truly feel that Amar Chitra Katha's artists were influenced by 
by Ravi Varma paintings, by the color, by the characters, by the, the way the graphic elements are portrayed. Is it possible that the creatures of Amar Chitrakatha comic books were inspired by Ravi Varma's style and used it in their artwork? Amma, Amma said that Raja Ravi Varma was in fact the first person to paint the characters from many stories that I had read in those comics. Ravi Varma used the portraits of the people he knew to depict the characters in the stories from Hindu mythology. He painted stories about Dushyanta and Shakuntala, Nala and Damayanti, Krishna and Radha, Rama and Sita and their adventures. And you know something? I know I've read many of these comics and I think they're still around. So maybe some of you have read them as well. During the last years of the 19th century and in the early years of the 20th century, Ravi Varma was the most famous artist in India. He was well regarded both as a portrait maker and as a creator and storyteller of Indian mythology. Look at this amazing painting of a scene from the Ramayana. You know, a friend of mine who had seen this painting um, in the Mysore Museum, I think it is, said that you can almost, when you look at the painting, the live painting, the real original painting, it looks like there's blood coming out of Jatayu's wing falling down. Isn't that incredible? I've only seen this painting as a print. So if, if any of you travel, it would be exciting to see that. I read that Ravi, Va oh, sorry. My mother said that Ravi Varma painted gods with a human touch. They seemed friendly enough, just like people. And you know what else is really interesting? He painted a lot of paintings of gods and people and, and, and courtiers and princes and royalty. But one of the incredible things that he did is that he started a lithographic press and he made copies of his art. In the old days, and even today, to, to own original art requires a lot of money and it costs quite, quite a bit to buy it. When you are able to acquire art by buying a lithographic print, it means the art travels. It means more people can own it. It means more people can see the art. And so his art became accessible to everyone, which is really quite wonderful, isn't it? It means that when he painted all these paintings, more people could enjoy it. And that's another reason why Ravi Varma was so um, honored and liked and appreciated. He painted people of all faiths. He painted bishops. He painted, you know, mullahs. He painted, uh, you know, gods from the Hindu mythology. He painted from stories. So Ravi Varma and his wife had three daughters and two sons. And this is a painting that Ravi Varma made of his daughter holding her son. Isn't that very pretty? I don't know if you can see it. But if you get the book and have a look, it's, it's quite amazing. And her hair is all drawn up very nicely. What is also interesting about Ravi Varma's art is that he traveled everywhere and he painted saris in their authentic style. He painted jewelry that was typical of particular regions. So if you had a Bengali girl in a Bengali style sari, her jewelry was what a Bengali girl wore. If he painted somebody from Kerala, they wore very typical Kerala jewelry. That is very exciting because in a sense, it's sort of national integration. He traveled all over India and he brought all of these women into his canvases so you could really look and appreciate and enjoy all of it. I read that Ravi Varma lived in a time when people in India were looking for creative ways to free themselves from British rule. Ravi Varma's bright and dazzling paintings of India's past made people feel very proud of their history and literature. This made his paintings very popular and people wanted to have their portraits painted by him. In his later years, Ravi Varma lived in states outside of Kerala. He lived in Mysore in Karnataka, in Baroda in Gujarat, and several other cities in India. In 1881, the Maharaja of Baroda, Sayaji Rao Gaikwad, invited Ravi Varma to his Lakshmi Vilas Palace in Baroda to be a resident artist. In those days, a lot of royalty, a lot of kings and princes would invite somebody to come and live in their palace and paint. And all their food was taken care of. They got their paints, they got their canvases. So you didn't have to spend money for your art and you were able to then sell your work. So this is one way of earning a living. During his stay there, 
He painted many canvases that told stories from the Mahabharata and the Ramayana. He also created many portraits of the members of the Baroda royal family. Ravi Varma stayed in Gujarat for nearly 14 years. In 1888, he went, Ravi Varma went on an all India tour to get an idea of the different clothes worn by men and women in other parts of the country. This change of setting helped him think and paint differently. He shared many folk and traditional art forms of India on canvas and his art no longer just used South Indian models. Ravi Varma became such a famous Indian artist because he made sure his art could be appreciated by everyone, not just by rich people who could buy expensive canvases. In 1894, he started a lithography press called the Ravi Varma Pictures Depot in Maharashtra and made many, many copies of his paintings so that more people could see and own the beautiful art and worship God inside their own houses. Ravi Varma asked his brother Raja Raja Varma to manage the press. But since Raja Raja Varma was not able to manage the press well and it lost him money, he sold it to a German printing technician. In 1901, a mysterious fire destroyed the press and it had to be shut down temporarily. Now we find out about why he was called Raja. In 1904, the Viceroy of India, Lord Curzon, gave Ravi Varma the Kaiser E. Hind gold medal as a recognition by the British Empire to acknowledge his artistic talent. He was also then given the title Raja. You know, like the like in England these days, you know that the Queen of England can knight you with a little sword. And when you when you get knighted, you become a sir or a lady. So just like that, Lord Curzon gave him the title Raja. From then on, Ravi Varma was called Raja Ravi Varma. So that's how he got Raja. Did you know that? Now this, this medal, the Kaiseri Hind gold medal, do you know another famous person in India who's won this medal? Can you think of somebody? You all know who he is. Tell me. Do I have an answer? No, I just have some lovely feedback that everybody's enjoying themselves. Mahatma Gandhi was, has also won the Kaiseri Hind gold medal. So has Sarojini Naidu. Okay, now we're coming to the end of the book. Two years later, Raja Ravi Varma passed away at the age of 58. He was fondly remembered as the Leonardo da Vinci of India. It was said that by combining Indian traditions and Indian subjects with European techniques, Raja Ravi Varma had created a new style of painting in India and he would never be forgotten. Raja Ravi Varma's style influenced many artists after him. Amma today said that today he is regarded as the most important representative of the Europeanized school of art and India. And you know what the little girl says? And I like him too, because though he grew up in a palace and painted royalty, he also made his art available to everyone. And then in the end, we have our little speaker, the narrator. She takes out a scrapbook and she cut out and stuck the portrait of Raja Ravi Varma. And then she wrote a little poem. She said, Raja Ravi Varma, the prince from Travancore, was known for his great paintings of Indian epic lore. His strokes were bright and vibrant. He created them with style. People rushed to buy his work and he made it worth their while. And the book ends with her saying, I can't wait to tell Mrs. Mitra that I know so much about the artist Raja Ravi Varma. Did you like that story? Thumbs up, anybody? Good, that's wonderful. Did you all read the cool facts? You want me to read you some of the cool facts? Who wants to hear the cool facts? Everybody? Okay, all right. You know, shall I tell you this? Raja Ravi Varma was so famous that in his birthplace, the small town of Kilimanur, there was no post office. 
but he started getting so much fan mail that they had to open a post office because letters and requests for paintings came flooding in from various corners of the country. Isn't that incredible? If you could have a post office uh, opened in your name. So that's exciting. You know something else that's really interesting? Raja Ravi Varma was so great that in 2013, a crater on planet Mercury was named Varma in his honor. Did you know that? So many cool facts. Let me read you another one. In 2008, a sari woven with copies of 11 paintings by Raja Ravi Varma entered the Guinness Book of World Records as the most expensive silk sari. The sari was priced at rupees 40 lakhs and it weighed 8 kgs. Imagine wearing a sari where it, that weighed 8 kgs. Check with your moms. I'm sure they wouldn't ever want to wear one. The main highlight of the sari, though, is Ravi Varma's famous painting called Galaxy of Musicians, which, by the way, is in this book. You should look at it. And you know how long it took to weave the sari? It took 36 weavers a whole year to hand weave this wedding sari. That's amazing. Okay, what else can I tell you? Oh, who's heard of Dada by Dada Sahib Falke? Have you heard of Dada Sahib Falke? He's known as the father of Indian cinema. Guess what? Look at this interesting thing, connection. Dada Sahib Falke, when he was young, worked at the Ravi Varma Press in the early 20th century. And when Falke moved to the movie industry, he used what he'd seen in the press, which is what? Ravi Varma's paintings, to create artwork for movie posters. That's why so many old Bollywood posters with their bright colors look just like Raja Ravi Varma paintings. Isn't that cool? And you know, the first time he ever left his home, guess how old he was? Even though he got married at, at 18, the first trip away from home was to a temple called Mugambiga Temple when he was 22 years old. But then after, and, and that time when he went, his family sent a cook with him because it was a long journey. Even to, to go just a few miles away, you had to take either a bullock cart or, or maybe there was a horse. There was, no, there was no ship or plane or train in those days. And he traveled with his cook so he would get all his favorite food when he was traveling. Okay, what else can I tell you? Um, lots of other interesting facts that you should find out. Um, one other little secret, he had a sister and a brother who used to paint. The sister was evidently quite a talented artist, but in those days, women had to get married and then start a family and all of that, so she didn't get a chance to paint, which is sort of sad. I mean, she helped him with some of his art before she got married. She used to do the backgrounds of his canvases when he did all the figures. Um, so I, I've read the story, and, and I want to give the children an opportunity to speak and ask me any questions. Are they going to be unmuted? Who's the administrator? Will somebody unmute the, the, the children? Yes. yes. Okay. We'll have yes, to take turns, one at a time, right? Yes, ma'am. So children, put your hands up and then I think whoever's administering will un unmute you one by one. Yes, ma'am. So I was asking that what is the name of the teacher? What is the name of the teacher? Mrs. Mitra. Okay, and the Raja Ravi Varma appeared when he was old. I mean, when he, when he was married. He was 18 years old when he was yes, married. Yes, so, so he painted that time. Or he he was painting way before that. He went to the temp He went to the Travancore Palace when he was 15. He was taken by his uncle there. And he observed the palace painter and he started painting on his own at that time. Not but he probably, was, right? didn't, sell, he probably me, didn't sell his paintings till he was about 18. Not in walls, I think, like he did when he was small. Not in walls. Yeah, when he was small, he was painting on the walls of his house. Yes. That's true. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes, thank you. Yes? Ma'am, can you tell me what is the duration of this class? Which class? Sorry. You want to know how long this event is today? I didn't get your question. I'm sorry, sweetie. What was that? Hello? Hi, 
ma'am excuse me ma'am yes ma'am what means amma amma is the same as mummy or or um, mother amma is how we would address our mother in south india what do you say do you say ma what do you call your mother ma yeah it's a amma is like ma or mummy or mom or uh, mater in different languages we have different ways of calling your mother hello ma'am hello what is the name of the narrator so we don't have a name and you know why i wrote it that way because any of you reading the book could be the narrator i imagine the 8 year old child to be anybody who's reading the book you can imagine yourself to be asking all of these questions that the little girl asks so she is she is you and me and everyone else she could be anyone yes ma'am ma'am i'm raisa i had a question and yes. if uh, uh, raja ravi varma married a princess won't he be uh, crowned king so not really uh, he he married a princess means he was the consort of a princess but that doesn't mean that he's a king no um you know from the south indian tradition it just means that he's the husband of the princess but he you know it is true that i'm sure the staff in the house and others would have considered him to be royalty but the actual title of raja was given to him by lord curzon Ma'am, I am Andrija. I wanted to ask from where we will get this book. This book is available in bookstores all over. Where are you from? Are you from Kolkata? Yes, ma'am. So it's available in Storyteller Bookstore in Kolkata. It's available in many different bookstores. You okay. can also get it on Amazon. dot com. Thank you, ma'am. I was searching it also, but I did not yeah. get it. It's, it's definitely there, honey. Lots and lots of people. Okay. Mom, I have a question. I'm Tanu Rika. Yes. So I was saying that how could uh, there have been no ships in, in the time of Raja Ravi Varma because the British used to take ships to India. But he didn't have access to it. Those were probably commercial ships and not not passenger ships oh. for travel. Okay. Good point, though. You're right. I did say that, didn't I? Ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, I am Nikhil Kant. Has it gone similar for only the drawing of people? Sorry, I couldn't understand that question. The audio is not clear. Ma'am, can you hear me now? I can. I I heard you say, "Can you hear me now?" What is your question? So, has it gone similar or only he? Born people, only people and good point. So he did. He did primarily paintings of pro. I mean, it was portraits of of well known people. But then, when he started painting scenes from the Mahabharat and the Narai, I mean, Ramayana and the Puranas, then there was a lot of landscape as well. So if you look at his paintings of Shakuntala, Nala Damayanti, you know, there's uh, you can see the whole scene. You can see the story almost. Uh, on the canvas, so definitely he did do landscapes. Ma'am, I have a question on Anushka. Hello. Ma'am, Anushka. Anushka. Ma'am, I have a question. Okay. Ma'am, uh, when he he was born? When was he born? It's in the book. He was born in eighteen forty-eight. Did you see that? April twenty ninth. I'm just trying to think. Where is it? Ma'am, um, I have a question, Manvi Salda. You have a story. What? Sorry, I, the audio is not very clear coming from some of your mics. What was the question? Ma'am, my question that is Raja Ravi Mama. In which time they go to school? did he go to school in his in in his time i'm sure he went to school it may have been because of because he came from a wealthy family sometimes 
people you know who had the money they had the teachers come to the house to teach them so in his case maybe he didn't go to a conventional school it's possible that he had a teacher who came home like a, what they call a governess or or somebody who came home to train and then when he was 14 he went to the other to the Travancore palace his uncle took him there to observe the artwork of the palace painter and his so he he became a painter after that so that is the skill he, he he acquired. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Manvi, you're you're muted. I can't hear you. Manvi, meaning of Gonvas. Sorry, what was that? Man, what is meaning of Gonvas? You are sad now, na. Ah. Uh, Somebody said it was their birthday on April 28th. That's wonderful. I, I'm afraid I didn't quite catch that question. I apologize. Um, um, Madhuri Ma, if you have any question, please ask. I was asking the, uh, when he was born, but that... Uh, was he was asked. born on April 29th, 1848. And he died at the age of 58. In the twenty, please excuse me. Yes, ma'am. Raja Ravi Verma was married to a princess, so I know that royal families of that time had some cars. So why didn't he go in cars to places that he goes went? I don't think he had a car because they said that he wasn't able to travel at that time. He traveled with quite a bit of difficulty in his in his time. Okay, ma'am. Probably in the early 20th century. I don't remember when was a car, when did people have cars? I don't think it was till the early 20th century, right? I actually don't know the dates of when a car was manufactured. We need to look that up, good question. You know what you should do is, is check it on Google. Somebody said from 1920 onwards, there you are. Okay. Any more questions? Hello, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, from where we get this book? Where can you buy this book? You can buy it in any bookstore or on Amazon. All the bookstores will have it, lots of bookstores, because you know why? Somebody sent me photographs of many bookstores all over India that had this cover there and I was so excited. So there were shelves with this paint, this book over there in Hyderabad, in Kolkata, in New Delhi, uh, in Chennai, many, many places. So if you find the book in your bookstore, to send me a picture or send Prabha Kaitan a picture, the foundation, okay? And uh, if you if you read the book and you want to give us a review, we would love to hear from you and what you thought about the book. Mom, I have a question. Yes. When did Raja Ravi Verma die? He died at the age of 58. So let's see if I know my math. I think it was, we just read that out to you. He died in 1906. 1906. Uh, Ma'am, where will we find Raja, uh, all, all of the Raja Ravi Verma's paintings? So they're all over the country in many museums. There's some of them are in Lakshmi Vilas Palace. And many of their original art is also owned. Some of them are in the Raja Ravi Verma Foundation Museum. Uh, and there are many, many paintings owned by private collectors all over India. But his paintings are very expensive. So... The ones that most of us get to see in people's homes are usually just prints or lithographs. I have a few in my house too, but they're prints of Raja Ravi Varma paintings. Ma'am, actually, I wanted to ask a question. I'm Dito Brother Banerjee. Hello, how are you? Ma'am, I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. Do you know what time it is here in California? Does anybody know? Um... What time is it there for you? It's probably 11.15 in the morning for you. 11.22. 11.22. We are 12 and a half hours behind India in California. And I'm in California, which is on the west coast of America. 
The time here is eight minutes to eleven p.m. So you are doing this during night. I am doing this during the night because I knew that you couldn't you couldn't do this at night. I said it's only fair that I do it at night, right? We can't get the kids to stay up till eleven o'clock at night. So I agreed when the organizers asked me. I said, okay, I can do it at night, but you better make sure that it's finished before midnight. So I need to get to sleep too, right? Yes, yes, right. Okay, ma'am. Actually, one thing I wanted to tell you was yeah. that like Raja Ravi Verma has been like uh, given on some like you know Indian stamps. We can find him on some sports stamps. Oh, really? I didn't know about sports stamps, but yes, I think they made a. They have. Yes, uh, in 1971. Oh, excellent! Nineteen seventy-one, they made them. Wonderful. Okay, so like, look, I wonder, are they still in circulation, or maybe yes, you're a stamp collector, right? Yes, ma'am. Actually, like while I was like researching about Raji, like Raja Ravi Verma, I like actually found like a picture of him in like Google Images. So I I researched about it, and then I saw that it came it had come out in nineteen seventy-one. Oh, that's wonderful! I didn't know that. See, next time we do another edition of this book, we can put that in as a as a fun fact. Kids always love the cool facts. Ma'am, I'm Deva, and I was asking that uh, where was Raja Ravi Verma born? He was born in a village called Kilimanjaro in Kerala. Do you know where Kerala is? It's in southern India, right? Right at the bottom of India. Okay, shall I ask some of you some questions? I want someone to tell me for those of you who've read the book, what was the detail that you enjoyed the most? Anybody? Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am Khushi Agarwal, I have a question. Yes. Ma'am, I want to ask that. Can you tell me what is the duration of the class? So I didn't realize this was a class, but the event is one hour. So we have another five minutes before it ends. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so I am telling. So what I love the most in this book. What is the that, what in this yes, book? Yes, ma'am. So. The I love the, the thing that the king did that he drew pictures on the wall. <laughs> you love that, I know. And and he didn't get into trouble even though he drew pictures on the wall, right? <laughs> It is. He's, so he must have been one of the first muralists. You've heard of murals, right? A lot of artists who do mur. You know, in California there are streets which have big um, walls sometimes at the end of the you know at the end of the road. and there are some artists who come and paint on these huge backdrops they're called muralists so when you're driving by you see these huge murals on the side of the street yes ma'am um in the question you ask um the favorite part of this uh, in the book is how uh, is how he kept how he kept his dream about being an artist and kept on drawing and finally he uh, reached uh, he reached at the point where he became the most famous artist in india that's wonderful so if you have drive and talent and ambition and interest you make sure that you you fulfill your dreams right wonderful i think the organizers might be wanting to wrap up now i'm not quite sure yes ma'am um, did no, wait yeah. did tanirika have a question Hello. Hi, ma'am. Okay. So, any last uh, minute advice or a message you want to give to our young readers? I'm just delighted that there are so many children. This is like the second or third large event with children that I'm doing, and it's so exciting to see how engaged children are in India. I haven't read this book out aloud in America yet. the book just came out in april as you know and with covid and all these lockdowns most of my events have been um in the wee hours of the night uh i have been speaking to children all over india and it's been so much fun because children are reading closely they're reading with engagement they're reading with interest they have all kinds of interesting observations they've taught me things as well so it's just delightful my advice is keep reading reading allows you to travel all over the world it, it gives you an opportunity to learn about people about about you know 
about all kinds of things. And it, 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 it expands your imagination. It increases your vocabulary. You know, that I still remember in class nine in school in Kolkata, I went to school in Kolkata too. I learned some words in class nine that I still haven't forgotten. I read it in a book called um, My Family and Other Animals by Gerald Durrell. And in those days in Loretto House, Middleton Row, they used to make us write down the name, write down new words each, each day that we had read in a chapter, words that we may not have been familiar with. And then we would have a vocabulary test at the end of the week. And so you learn your, you know, your, your vocabulary is reinforced by reading as well. So that's it. My advice is keep reading. It's just the most wonderful thing you can do. Thank you, ma'am. It was actually indeed an inspiring and such an engaging session. We actually learned so much today. And this magnificently, you know, illustrated biography, which surely helped the young readers to discover the life of Raja Ravi Verma in such a fun and interesting way. So it was actually so much fun today. It was entirely my pleasure. I think it's a beautifully produced book. Rai Kasen has painted pictures that, you know, she had illustrations of the character is just as exciting as many of the, much of the art in the book. And she's, there's a seamless, uh, spread from art, original art, to the artist's interpretation, which makes the book even more colorful and exciting. So I'm very, very pleased. Thank you, ma'am. So now on behalf of the foundation, I would like to thank you, Ms. Shobha Tharuji. I would also like to thank our partners, Associate uh, Red Banda. I would also like to thank the little ones who really made this session possible by, you know, asking such cute questions. and. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, kids. It was a pleasure to meet all of you and enjoy the rest of your day. And I will wrap up and go to bed. Thank you very much. See you all. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>